Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture with your hands on your knees in Dhyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, both the legs, the whole body. Shift your awareness to your breath. Spontaneous, natural breathing coupled with awareness. Shift your awareness once again. Bring it to the eyebrow center, blue madhya. And at the blue madhya, try to visualize the form of a brightly burning candle flame. And if it is difficult to visualize, then you can experience, imagine a subtle pulsation at the eyebrow center. And maintaining your awareness of the experience at the eyebrow center, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Oh. Oh. Om Sahana Vavato Sahana Bunakto Sahavir Yankaravahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamastu Ma Ved Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Keeping your eyes closed, gently rub the palms against each other. To generate some warmth in the palms. Place the palms on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om Tat Sat Namo Narayan Jai Ho. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic. And I must say that nobody is immune to the necessity of this topic. No matter where we are, no matter how we are, no matter how rich, how poor, how educated, how uneducated, wherever we are, this topic is of paramount importance in today's times. Especially in the background of the devastating pandemic, over the last two years. And just on the heels of this pandemic, we observe 
there is a spate of newer infections. During the pandemic, if there was one thing which could and which did work against the virus, it was your immune system. If you have been following the medications and the history of the medications used, almost every medicine was found to be useful and then studies showed it was not really so helpful. And many people went into devastating stages. Some are still suffering something called as the long COVID. And there are some for whom it made no difference. They had no symptoms. I personally know during my period in the COVID wards, how two people adjacent to each other would behave totally differently. What is the basis of this? The basis of this is the ability of the human system to respond to a potentially harmful stimulus. I will not be going into the technical details because the technical details are available all over. Everybody can read it. Rather, I would like to bring our attention to one point which everybody seems to have missed. Most people seem to have missed. If there are two people where all the biases are taken care of, the age, the gender, the comorbidities, everything is taken care of. But still, there are two people whose uh, infections, the blood parameters on infection seem to be same. But one goes into the cytotoxin, cytokine in storm and the other has no symptoms. Why is that happening? It is happening because of our immune system. One person has his or her immune system capable enough to deal with the virus and the injury which is coming, whereas the other person is unable to. And instead of focusing on this basic parameter, the world over, we are trying to find a magic bullet. Somehow we feel that the problem is out there and therefore the solution is also out there. Let me look for a better drug. Let me look for something newer. Let me look for something better. Oh, uh, will this pill help me in increasing my immunity? Well, of course, there are stuff by which immunity can be improved and modulated. But you cannot replace the human immune system. Some people feel or they behave such that the human body is like a slab of meat having no innate ability to defend itself. But that is far from the truth. In medical college, we were taught the surgeon can apply the sutures, but it is the body which heals. The surgeon cannot heal. In absence of the healing capacity of the body, even the best of the surgeons is reduced to impotence. This is what our professor taught us almost in the first lecture. 
this is something which we need to understand because our body has the ability to face almost any danger which is thrown towards it for a moment why don't we think why is it that only humans amongst all of nature's creatures have been so badly devastated the bats they had no problems the monkeys have no problem the dogs have no problems they are not infected even if they are infected nothing happens to them why only because the immune system is different and today we will try and understand what are the measures that we can utilize what are the factors which have an impact on our immune system first i will describe and discuss about the immune system from a medical point of view and once we have understood that then i would go to the next level there are two types of immune mechanisms broadly one which is innate which is inherently present in the body and the other which is acquired adaptive immunity over a period of time we create a response in the same manner as blinking we are not taught how to blink but we are have we have to learn how to walk in the same manner we have something which is known as the innate inherent immune system and what forms this immune system very simple things this human body if you look at it it is one of the greatest wonders of science we make use of physical barrier we make use of chemical ph changes we make use of the molecular tensions we make use of the inter Intra intra molecular places and the forces working over there. The physical barrier, be it your skin, be it your mucosa, be it the digestive system, be it the respiratory system, they form a strong barrier. The skin is created such that it will not allow any infection to come in. skin is not just a piece of paper lying over here put it under the microscope and you will see then we have the sweat sweat tears have some anti bacterial anti viral uh, enzymes which will break up the enzymal the ability of the bacteria to survive and so on that is one aspect if by chance the virus or the bacteria enters the body then still we have got multiple layers which are already prepared the moment it is detected one by one all these layers start getting activated and they work towards removing this harmful stimulus and as we work towards removing this harmful stimulus there is a process which is created a process called inflammation sometimes we get fever fever is not a bad thing in itself fever is a response to get rid of the noxious stimuli when it goes beyond a specific level then it is harmful and then beyond that if the infection still stays then the body has got another mechanism which is triggered and over a period of time that mechanism strengthens itself that is known as the adaptive immunity 
and there are specific specific organs and specified organs in the body and this system is capable of creating enough producing enough army to take care of any intruders the problem is sometimes we undermine our own army our own defendants and how do we do that our def defendants they will need proper nutrition we don't eat things which are nutritive we eat something which is tasty diet that is one thing which needs to be looked into <clears throat> second thing the hormonal movements in the body they need to be in a specific rhythm the entire body and mind has got a specific rhythm if we don't follow this rhythm then we go out of sync and if you remember when while you are driving both the wheels of your car they need to be aligned if one wheel is out of alignment what happens either there is an accident or there is excessive wear and tear the bushing bearings will be worn off and there will be an accident that is the second thing which happens our lifestyle is such that we are out of sync with the human system and when we are out of sync not only do we create difficulty for the normal flow but we create impediments we create toxins we create problems for the immune system which it needs to take care of so what happens if i have got 100 soldiers to fight the enemy of these 100 soldiers 20 soldiers have gone trying to manage this internal conflict so now i am left with only 80 soldiers if i have not taken a proper diet all these 80 soldiers are not in their optimum maybe 5 6 succumb so we are left with 70 75 soldiers and then the mental patterns they come up stress comes up that again has an inhibitory effect because when we have stress the chemical impulse which goes to the mind to the body is that there is a danger situation and when there is a danger situation whom do we call we call the armed forces now these armed forces out of the 100 70 uh, 30 are already gone another 10 or 20 are taken away we are left only with 50 beyond that you need to maintain a specific level of fitness you don't do that another 10 20 are gone so we are only at a quarter of our capacity and so the intruder just walks in and uh, makes hay that is what is happening and therefore these five factors need to be addressed first diet we need to use natural diet we need to use wholesome diet we need to eat at the proper times our digestive enzymes our liver all of them they have a specific rhythm we need to try and eat at the correct time at proper duration these are all simple practices which everybody of us knows but we have over a period of time lost the significance of that that is the first thing if nothing else fix your meal times fix your waking and sleeping times just these two things 
and 20%, 30% of your problems will go away. Eat the correct thing, another 20% of the problems will go away. Have a correct mental outlook, the problems will go away. And then proper exercise. A proper exercise creates proper stimulation to this entire body and in the body also the immune system. And these are the systems which are going to support our immune system. So if they are in a better condition, our immune system is well supported and can fight. Our immune system has got good nutrition and can work through. So these are the basic patterns which we need to remember. Yes, zinc is important. Magnesium is important. Um, all those things, vitamins are important. Everything is important, no doubt. But if we have not worked on these things, none of them are going to be sufficient. And if we work on this, then our body has enough that it can automatically absorb. You don't have to keep taking hundred and three or four tablets of vitamin C every day to boost your immunity. I'm not against vitamin C. I'm against making immunity dependent on the tablet outside. Immunity is dependent on system inside. Diet lifestyle, mental patterns, very crucial, exercise, proper sleep. The quality of our sleep is very poor. And in today's times, reduced exposure to electronic media. Electronic media also exerts a negative role on the body functions. This far is what we know about normal medical aspects of immunity. How to do, what to do, we will come soon. But there is another important aspect, the aspect of yoga. Yogic practices, of course, will help improve the lifestyle. It will help improve the mental patterns, physical fitness, align ourselves with the rhythm, be it asans, be it pranayam, be it premeditative practices, or be it purifying practices like the shat karmas. They all will help in this. And all of us know about it. But there is something much more to yogic practices than just this. I'll tell you a story. Long time ago, there, were, there was a big discussion who is the better or who is the most superior person. And this di discussion debate was amongst 11 people. Five were the senses. Taste, touch, smell, hearing, vision. Five were the organs of action. 10. The 11th was the mind. Intellect, emotions, everything covers in the mind. So these 11 people, they came. And there was a big, long table where the discussion was to take place. And as these radiant, very divine-looking people walk in, just along with them, there was one ordinary looking person who came in. As he came in, he picked up a chair from outside and he sat. He didn't sit on the table, but he was sitting just 
few feet away from the table. Nobody paid any attention. Perhaps he was a chowkidar or perhaps he was the person who was going to wind up afterwards. Nobody paid any attention. The senses started speaking. Each sense gave why it is the most superior. Then the organs of action started speaking. Each of them tried to tell why we are more superior. Finally, the mind spoke. And the mind was very eloquent. Almost everybody could not answer up the mind. But then there was a free for all fight which erupted. Everybody was trying to show who is the best, who is the most superior. Bored by all of this, that 12th person who was sitting there quietly just got up and left the room. And the moment this 12th person got up and left the room, all 11 of them suddenly started feeling extremely weak. They started feeling faint and they were being, it was as if somebody was pulling them away and they found they were all going behind this 12th person. So they said, hello, what are you? What did you do? Who are you? He turned around and said, I am Prana. We have the senses. We have the sense organs. We have the organs of action. We have the mind. They all function. But the moment Prana decides to leave, none of them have any capability. They all start fainting and losing their vitality and vigor. It is this pranic energy which is of crucial importance. Second thing is everything in the body is made up of five elements. Prithvi, Jal, Agni, Vayu, Kasha. The quality of this is very essential. These two are very crucial. And yogic practices have the ability to improve the pranic quotient. They have the ability to start up a new circuit. We are working on a low level 100 volts electricity, they have the ability to take the voltage to much higher, 1000 volts. And when things are working at 1000 volts, the entire dynamics changes. Ability goes higher. That is what yogic practices can do. And that is why many times there is miraculous effect by practices. The effect is not just because of the physical activities. The effect is because it works on the level of prana. And today, there is a spur of energetic healings because people have started realizing that energy is something which is important. Why is it that in yoga, it is said, please sit straight, not bent? Why, what is the significance of that? If you have a pipe and through the pipe, you have water flowing. And if the pipe is kinked at five places, will the water flow? It cannot flow. In the same way, there are energy channels. And these energy channels need to be free so that the energy moves unhindered. That is the reason why we are asked to sit straight. That is the reason why the specific posture is created. Asanas are not exercises. Asanas are postures. When you bring the body in a specific posture, then the energetics, the energy circuit, pranic energy changes. And when the pranic energy creates a specific circuit, it has got an impact. 
that is the reason why we have miraculous effects to yoga. Not just physical practices. The physical practices exert an energetic impact. Pranayam certainly exerts an energetic impact. Meditative practices, when done properly, also have same impact. So this is something which all practitioners of yoga need to understand. It is not essential that we do Shirshasan. We do all those powerful acrobatic asanas. No. We can do even the simplest asana. But if you do it in the correct manner, then the energy circuits start getting activated. And once the energy circuits start getting activated, then the impact is seen. So that is the next level. First level is the medical aspect, diet, lifestyle, mental patterns, exercise, sleep. And then activating this higher energy. That is the role of yogic practices. It does not matter if I am old, if I am decrepit, if I have knee problem, I have back problem, I have shoulder problem, I have this problem, that problem, third problem. It does not matter. There are different tools by which we can activate these energy circuits and have the impact. So, when we practice asanas, keep in mind that we are doing it for a subtle reason. During COVID, I used five very simple practices. Something which patients can do sitting on the bed in the hospital. But when they did this for a period of time, a week or so, there was a very powerful and immediate impact. Not because these asanas were anything great. I'm sure all of you would have done them. But it is how to do the asanas. There is a system to be followed by which this energy is gradually activated. And those of you who are professionals in electricity, electrical engineers, electronic engineers, you would know that energy is not something which can be trifled with. Although energy, electricity is all around us, the moment there is a small error, there is a big short circuit and the fuse blows, the fire comes up, accidents happen. Therefore, it is very essential that when we are practicing, we practice in the correct system, correct order. Then you will see there is an impact and that impact is much greater than one would expect. So this is what I feel is crucial for all people to understand. Our immune system is capable of fighting the most difficult battles. All we need to do is get out of the way. Don't obstruct it. Let it work. And when you get out of the way, the body responds and it responds magically. There is so much, there are, the ability of the body is so amazing that it has got deeper, I mean, it has got such level of intellect and understanding, we will not be able to comprehend. All we have to do is allow the body to be in sync with nature. The moment there is synchronicity, everything comes up. Abilities just flourish up. That is what we need to do. And to do this, we don't, don't need to spend too, too long 
that we have to spend two hours or three hours practicing yoga. No. You can do it in capsular form. 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the day or 10 minutes in the day, 10 minutes in the evening, 10 minutes at night. Simple practices can make a lot of difference. And let us do one small, simple practice. A practice of relaxation combined with some energy man manipulation by which we can have an impact on ourselves. Please close your eyes, hands on your knees, body straight. If possible, sit in a meditative posture. If not, if you have difficulty in the knees or in the back and you are sitting in a chair, then ensure that the chair is stable, not wobbling, and that the feet are firmly on the ground. The head, neck, shoulders, back are all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to the toes. Become aware of the posture and the muscular tone in the different parts of the body. Posture and tone in the head, in the neck, in the shoulders, in the arms, chest, upper back, abdomen, lower back, hips, both the legs, the whole body. Gently observe your body. What is the status in my head, in my neck and so on in the whole body. For a few minutes, gently and smoothly move your awareness from the top of the head to the toes, observing, understanding, noting. And as you move across, become aware that the very act of becoming aware of the posture and the tone makes the body still, steady, relaxed. All the excessive tension is draining away. And in this still, steady, relaxed body, We shall take a sankalpa, a resolution. A resolution is like a seed sown in the deeper layers of consciousness. Anything in life can fail us, but not the sankalpa taken in the beginning and at the end of this practice, you need to nurture it properly. And then it blossoms like a tree. This seed goes deep into your consciousness and from there it blossoms. And therefore, take the sankalpa after due thought and Ensure that it is simple, it is positive, and it is unambiguous. 
for today, we can take the sankalpa of health on the physical dimension, mental dimension, emotional dimension, social and spiritual dimensions. Repeat the sankalpa to yourself mentally three times. I shall enumerate to you the different body parts and you have to become aware of that body part. And if it is easily possible, try to visualize that body part. Do not open your eyes. Do not move your body. And do not tense the body part as we go along. Merely become aware. It is very essential that you maintain the flow of instructions. If there is something which you cannot follow, just drop it and keep on moving with the instructions. Become aware of the right hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, all five fingers together, palm, back of the palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, armpit, upper back, lower back, hip, thigh, kneecap, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, right big toe, second, third, fourth, fifth, the whole right side of the body, the whole right side of the body, awareness of the whole right side of the body. Bring your awareness to the left side, left hand thumb, second finger, third, fourth, fifth, all five fingers together, palm, back of the palm, wrist, Elbow, shoulder, armpit, upper back, lower back, hip, thigh, kneecap, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, left big toe, second, third, fourth, and the fifth. Awareness of the whole left side of the body the whole left side of the body, the entire left side. Bring your awareness to the top of the head, the skull, the crown, the forehead, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, the eyebrow center, right eye, left eye, right ear, left ear, right cheek, left cheek, right nostril, left nostril, upper lip, lower lip, both the lips together, chin, throat, neck, right shoulder blade, left shoulder blade, the right shoulder and the right arm, the left shoulder and the left arm, the right side of the chest, left side of the chest, abdomen, your lower back, right hip, left hip, right leg complete, left leg complete, the whole body, 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 the whole body and the whole body. Body is sitting comfortably in a meditative posture and it is still steady and relaxed. And you are aware of 
the posture of the body. And in this stationary body, only the movement of breathing goes on. You are breathing in and breathing out, inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling. Become aware of the spontaneous movement of respiration. Now, we shall count our breath in the reverse count from 15 to 1. As you inhale and exhale, count 15. Next inhalation, exhalation, count 14, 13, and so on, till 1. And while counting, if you make a mistake anywhere, go back to 15 and start all over again. You may begin the count now. Keep on counting, awareness on the breath and the count. With the next exhalation, complete your count. Mentally repeat to yourself three times the count of the breath. And bring your awareness back to the breath. Slow, spontaneous inhalation and exhalation. Now, we shall begin the next aspect, the deeper aspect. Visualize a thin silver tube extending from the navel to the throat. And as you inhale, imagine that the breath is moving up from the navel, across the heart, to the pit of the throat. And as you exhale, the breath moves from the throat, across the heart, to the navel. Inhale, navel, heart, throat. Exhale, throat, heart, navel. Navel, heart, throat. Throat, heart, navel. Keep on breathing spontaneously and naturally. Imagine the tube filling up from the navel to the throat and emptying from the throat to the navel. Continue this practice for a few moments. Navel, heart, throat, throat, heart, navel. Now add the visualization of 
small light particles, corpuscles of light. And imagine that as the breath moves up from the navel, these particles of light also move up with great speed. Navel, heart, throat, exhaling throat, heart, navel. Light particles move up, navel, heart, throat, throat, heart, navel. They move up and down, up and down. Become aware of this dual movement from the navel to the throat and back. And continue this practice for a few moments. Visualize that as these light particles are moving up and down, they are forming a channel of high energy. From the navel to the throat, there is a big powerful channel of energy being generated and stored. Now stop the awareness, the movement of the breath and maintain awareness of this channel of energy which is pulsating. Visualize that the tube is slowly dissolving and this energy is diffusing to the entire body, to the brain, to the skull, to the face, to the neck, to the chest, to the arms, to the abdomen, to the pelvis, to the hips, to the legs. Every cell of the body is suffused with this light. And as you breathe in and breathe out, imagine that as you breathe in, the light becomes brighter. And as you breathe out, this light dissolves all the illness, pain, sorrow, negativity, dissolves it and throws it out of the body with the breath. Breathing in, the whole body lights up, dissolving all the negativity and breathing out all the negativity leaves the body. Continue this visualization for some time. Fully conclude this visualization. Bring the energy which was diffused all throughout the body, bring it back to this channel from the throat to the navel. And from there, it collapses into the navel, the column collapses into the navel. And from the navel, this energy goes into the deeper dimensions of our personality. We are left with the body, but this body now has lightness, has happiness, has joy. And there is a subtle energy circulating throughout the whole body. Bring your awareness on your breath. You are breathing in and breathing out. Spontaneous, natural breath. Externalize your awareness. Become aware of the body. Sitting comfortably. Awareness of the posture. 
recall the sankalpa you had taken in the beginning of the practice. Repeat the sankalpa to yourself mentally three times. Gradually externalize your awareness further. Awareness of the contact points between the body and the floor. Awareness of the contact points between the body and the clothes. Body and the breeze. Externalize your awareness further. Awareness of the sounds and smells coming from the room. Externalize your awareness even further. Outside the room, the sounds, circumstances, situations outside the room. And once you have externalized your awareness completely, then bring the awareness back to the body. Become aware of the fingers and the toes. Gently wiggle the fingers and the toes. Roll the neck from side to side. Clasp the fingers. Stretch your hands above the head. Give your body a good stretch. Bring your hands back to the knees. Keeping your eyes closed. We shall conclude with Shanti part. Awareness on the lightness and the subtle energy in the body. And with the awareness on this, we shall chant the mantra Om three times, followed by the Shanti part, taking in a deep breath. Asato ma sadgamaya, tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityor ma mrutam gamaya, sarvesham swasti bhavatu, sarvesham shantir bhavatu, sarvesham purnam bhavatu, sarvesham mangalam bhavatu, Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Om Tryambakam yajamahe Sugandhim pushtivardhanam Urvarukam iva bandhanam Mrityor mukshiyam amrutat Om Shanti 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 Hands in Pranam Mudra Tvameva mata cha pita tvameva, tvameva bandhuscha sakha tvameva, tvameva vidya dravinam tvameva, tvameva sarvam mama deva deva, tvameva sarvam mama deva deva, tvameva sarvam mama deva deva. Hari Om. Hari Om. That's it. Gently rub your palms. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to the eyes, to the brain, to the body. 
and this is energizing the eyes, the brain, the body. Then gently move the palms away, open your eyes, Hariyom, Tatsat, Namo Narayan, Jai.